So most of the time when I hear people talk about After Effects, it goes something like, yeah, I've opened up After Effects once, but it was way too complicated and I just gave up and never used it. So if that's you, this video is for you. We're gonna go over a basic animation that I created recently, and we're gonna start it over right from scratch. The techniques and tricks that I use in this video are things that I use all the time, regardless of what my animation is. They are very handy. So even if you know a bit of After Effects already, this video might still be helpful for you too. Super simple, it's just a six second loop. It was a quick little explainer that I needed to make this week uh, for a little service that I'm starting. If you are a YouTuber and you wanna transfer your YouTube videos to Facebook, I created a whole method to do it and it's beautiful. Let me know if that's something you need. But anyways, I needed to make a little explainer video. And of course, the very first place that I start for all of my motion graphics is Envato Elements. Envato Elements is the sponsor for today's video, and I kid you not, I use them for literally every project I do. Whether it's stock video, graphic animations, full graphic templates, music, sound effects, you name it, Envato Elements has it. I honestly could not give this subscription a better recommendation. I literally use it every single project I do. And if you sign up, you can get 50% off a yearly subscription description. Now, with all that being said, for our project here, let's type in YouTube icon, because that's what we need. Here we have all the different categories. We want to scroll down to graphics, because in this case, we're just looking for the graphics. So I'm just going to browse. I'm going to look for something that, that kind of fits what I'm looking for. I think in this case, maybe I have to use like video icon. Yeah, that, that gave us a lot more results. So even a search like this gave me 1,251 results. That's really good. So there's definitely a lot of options here. So I'm gonna try and find the exact one that I used in my video. Um, where are ya? Yeah, let me just check my download history. <laughs> Blogger influencer icons, that's what it was called. So this is the package we're gonna use for this video. We'll take a look. Um, I've, I already have it downloaded here. So I downloaded the package, this is what we're looking at. In my case, I just want some PNGs. So I'm gonna go into here, PNGs color, and here is the icon I am looking for. All right, now back to After Effects. Let's just create a new composition, 1920 by 1080. By the way, if you don't know how to create a new composition, it is just this little film icon over here. In this case, the first thing I wanna do is create a background. So I'm just gonna right click in our timeline here, go to new and go to solid. I think for this animation, I want something in the blue. Now let's just pull in our icon. The first thing we wanna do is just scale and position it. So we move it over to the left side here. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard for scale, and then I'm just gonna scale it up just a little bit, maybe like 105. I'm going to enable keyframing, which is this little stopwatch down here. This will actually be our second position or like point B. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna be off frame. It's gonna come in and then it's gonna go off frame. So this position that it's in right now, we're actually going to pull forward, it, actually, it really doesn't matter how far you go. I'm just gonna go one second uh, because we're gonna change the time anyways, but let's just get the sequence going. So it's gonna go from point A to point B and then from point B to point C. Sometimes I like to create placeholder keyframes just to lay it out a bit better. Uh, so that's what I've done here. I just have one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go back to my first keyframe, hold down shift. So see, I can only move on the X axis. So what shift does is it'll, whatever direction you start to move your mouse, it'll lock it that direction. Uh, so if I were to go up and then click shift, it would only move on the Y axis, but I move to the right, then hit shift. So it'll lock on the, the, the X axis. So we have our first movement, which is good, then we want it to stay there, and then we want it to move to position C, which is on the left. Just like that, so same thing, click, drag, hold, shift, lock on the Y axis, sorry, lock on the X axis, and uh, yeah, now we should have a super basic animation. Real quick here, I'm going to pull my playhead to five seconds and hit N. I don't know if that is a default shortcut, but it's going to pull the um, work area back to wherever the playhead is. Is it B and M? Yes, B and M. So what I wanna do now is smooth out this animation. All I gotta do is select my position. It'll select all my keyframes for me. In my Ease and Wiz panel, going to hit apply. And that's going to give it a very nice like snappy motion. The next thing I wanna do is enable motion blur because I don't like looking at an animation that doesn't have motion blur on it. And that's just this button over here. I'll tighten up our workspace here so we can see the loop. At this point, I'd say we have 50% of the work done. All we're gonna do now, basically duplicate, but it's not as simple as just duplicate reposition because we've made keyframes. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I use. Let me show you why that won't work. Let's, let's say we duplicate this and we wanted to move it. Well, now our keyframes are all over the place. That's not what we want. So there's two ways we can do this. The first way we could select all our keyframes and then move it down. 
or over or whatever, we could just duplicate them this way. And that's not a bad idea. In fact, in this case, I think that could even be a good option. Another way we could do this, let's just create a couple more, create a null object, which is basically just a placeholder object that we can bind things to, we can parent to. So I'm going to, I'm gonna parent those to the null object. And now we can move the null object around. Right now it's moving all three of those objects that we just created, but I could start unbinding those objects, uh, which usually is my method uh, to do this, you know, it's not necessary. So now we have one, two, three, four. We now have all four on screen. Um, most of the time, that's the way I do it just because that's how my brain works. Uh, and then you don't have to worry too much about your keyframes. They're just, you don't have to select them or whatever. Uh, you can do either or I like the null method. So let's do the null object method. Let's duplicate however many we want. Uh, let's see, hey, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great, we got eight, we got eight icons. I'm going to leave the top one and parent the other seven here. I'm gonna parent it to the null object. Now I'm just gonna move the null object, positioning the second one. Now I'm going to release it from the null. Oops, so I'm gonna switch that to no parent. And then I'm gonna move it again. So I'm, again, I'm moving all six now. Null, let's move the other five, just one at a time. Um, this is gonna help you create that layout. In my case, I kind of just want it to be like all over the place kind of like as if you just tossed cards on a table. Did I do that the one? Yeah, that's good, okay. Now that they're all kind of moved around, I kind of want to shift, I want to just move the whole thing. So I'm going to select all of them and back to the null. Now we now we can just reposition that whole pile. Nulls are super handy. So here's what we got. Not bad, all we want to do now is stagger them. So what we're going to do is select all our images, hit P for position. Now we can see all our keyframes here. I think in my case, I'm actually just going to slide them. I just wanted to see the keyframes uh, so I can get a bit of a reference. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of test it out, see how it looks. That looks pretty cool. I think I might even tighten them up. Um, kind of only do like one, keep it between one and three frames instead of going all the way up to like five. Okay, so we have the first part complete. Now we're going to do the second part where we turn the YouTube videos into Facebook videos. So what I'm gonna do is just select all those, control D for duplicate. Now I'm gonna pull all these to the top. And by the top, I mean below the null, but I'm gonna leave that null at the top at all times. Okay, now I'm gonna hit U or P, doesn't matter in this, scenario, it's going to show us our keyframes. And what I'm going to do is actually just delete all these, the first half of the keyframes here, because we want the, we want the second half. So we can go from point B to a different point C. And then in this case, we're actually going to have a point D. So I got those keyframes selected. I'm going to hit delete. So now th these new layers will just be there. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is highlight these keyframes, which is our new point A, I guess, or point B. I'm gonna hold down Alt, and I'm gonna pull all the keyframes to the right. And I just figured out this trick right now as recording, you can line them all up. I was trying to duplicate them, but that's handy too. So now we have a uniform starting point. I'm also going to hit Alt bracket, and that should chop them all off. Now I'm gonna pull it back to when the first ones stop. And then we're just gonna take these end keyframes and just drag them out because we will use those a bit later. For now, we need to create our new B point. So I'm just gonna select all our layers here and then I'm gonna grab the Y position value and pull them all the way over to the right, maybe somewhere around here. So now we have the icons moving to the right and then back to the left. So I'm just gonna pull that in a bit more just so that it times up better. So as soon as these kind of settle down, we're gonna start moving to the right and then we're gonna all land on the left at the same time, which means I need to pull these back, which I just hit the P to pull up position on our old frames, and we'll just time those out so they all land together on the left side. Uh, so now let's add some stagger to our second set of motions. I'm just gonna select our keyframes here and start moving them around just within one frame up, one frame back. And that should be just enough in this case. Looking good. Boom, boom, boom. Now there's only one thing left. I'm just gonna select all and hit U to close the keyframes, hit U twice to close the keyframes. So now the next step is to take these red icons and turn them blue. Let's go to effects and presets and type in change. And let's use change to color. So we'll throw that on our first one here 
and we're going to go from red to a blue. Now let's copy that effect, copy, control C and paste it, control V on all the others. So now when we watch our animation, we can see them change to blue and to the other side. Now the only thing I got to fix here is I'm going to take these and put them at the bottom so that they seamlessly just come out of nowhere. Perfect. Great. Now let's throw our text in there. Super simple. YouTube. So it's YouTube, which will appear as the YouTube videos come by. And then right when the Facebook videos come by, I'm going to hit control shift D. Control D is duplicate. But when you add the shift in there, it's like a split and duplicate. I'm going to select YouTube and we're going to say to Facebook. And we're just going to time those on the motion and then we're going to cut alt square bracket. Cool. Now let's just throw those at the bottom. Now I'm noticing one thing that we got to change in that it's just not, it's not squared up. It's not uh, centered. Some little trick I like is to use the title safe action area. And that kind of gives me an idea of like roughly the shape of the composition. Um, so I can see it, my text isn't even centered. What am I doing with my life? So let's just square that up. And then again, over here with YouTube, just looking at the anchor point. So we got our text centered. Now we got to center our icon. So what I'm going to do is select all our icon layers. And again, parent to that null object, which is kind of like our reposition tool. Now, the nice thing about that is that it's not going to break our uh, keyframes that we've put in. Now, I'm just doing this one by eye, but if this needs to be super precise, you could also go up to view uh, rulers and draw lines and whatever, kind of like Photoshop. Looking good. I'm just going to hide our safe areas and uh, have a look at our animation. Looking good. I like that. I like that a lot. So there you go. I thought this little project was a good introductory into After Effects. Let me know if you learned something. After Effects is a super, super powerful tool for every editor to know, and I am more than happy to share any of my After Effects knowledge. Hopefully this video was basic enough, but still helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will be happy to uh, respond to those. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe for the next one. I will see you next time.